Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Randy from King Electric Guitars. I got my good friend Adam McIntyre from the Pinks here. He's going to demo a guitar that uh, I made this guitar originally to donate to a friend of mine who was uh, going through cancer, Jacob Rupert. And uh, he's unfortunately passed before I could get the guitar finished. But uh, his family asked that I go ahead and donate this and the proceeds of this to the Upbeat Foundation, which is a uh, a great thing in Atlanta that helps out musicians. Um, anybody in need, any musicians in need, they, they're there for them. So this guitar will be raffled off. Um, all the details will be in the link below, in the information below, and um, we'll be raffling this off on August the 19th at the uh, Upbeat show at the Star Bar. And uh, it will be shipped to uh, whoever, as long as it's continental US, you can click uh, the link below for any information and we'll be posting this around a bunch give you information on how to buy tickets and that kind of stuff it's going for a great cause this is adam mcintyre of the pinks um great atlanta musician guitar player uh host of power and volume podcast as well as what's the name of your other podcast adam it's called checking in checking in uh yes. and it is a a self-help book club podcast oh, very good <laughs> So much difference between the uh, the pickups. I love it, and uh, same as last time I played one of your guitars. Like the blend between them is really nice. Thank you. Thank um, you and again, this is like a super nice, uh, silky feeling guitar. It feels really solid, but it also it sings, you know, like a vintage instrument. So. Uh, it's got tonal character, but it also feels like real, real, real nice. I love it. Thank you.
Boy, that is a thick sound for the bridge pickup. I'm a huge fan of those pickups. Again, a bootstrap pickups, two guys in a garage in Ohio somewhere. Super easy to work with and make great pickups. I love them. Nice. Nice job, guys. Yeah, thank you. Last time you came, you threw on that rock slide. I, I uh, was like, oh no. So, so from now, now every time I set up a guitar, I go, hell, Adam can play slide on this. And I, if I know it's there, I know I'm good. I, I'm used to playing with stupid high action, and that's why my hands hurt. It helps. It's not, it's not yeah. necessary, but yeah. it helps. Well, as long as you got frets that aren't all over the place and a good straight neck. Yeah, tell me about these frets because they seem like... Uh, Those are jumbos on this one. I just wanted to try something a little different, and so I put jumbos on it. They feel great. Mm, thanks. And they're, you know, mirrored. <laughs> they're highly polished. They feel great. They sound great. <laughs> Golly, what a good sounding guitar. <laughs> Thank you, I appreciate that, man. It's a it's a mahogany body, so that adds a little thickness to it, I think. Yeah. Um, that mahogany's from a stash I got from a long time ago. It's a nice lightweight, and then five piece maple neck and some uh, Peruvian walnut in there just for some, some prettiness and, you know, make it solid and make it work what I was going for. So. I think Jacob would have dug this and also pretty much anybody would dig this. <laughs> yeah, um, I think it's it's funny you, you talk about Jacob. You know, everybody that knew Jacob knew that he had a, a way to be a, a little bit of a pain in the ass, but in like the yeah. nicest way in the world. Yeah. This guitar did the same thing to me. This guitar originally was the fabric all over the top mm -hmm. and it was gold. And um, no matter how I tried to paint it and make that work, it wasn't going to do it. So I stripped it all off and um, it turned out to be this. And uh, I think it turned out to be a much better guitar in the long run. Yeah. And uh, that's kind of a typical Jacob thing. He made us all much better. And uh, so it, it turned out, you know, the way it was supposed to. And it's like you said a little while ago, it's happy now. So, yeah. 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 I yeah. feel like part of his deal was uh, to remind everybody to not take themselves so seriously. Yeah, yeah, and that was, I, I pulled my hair out 10 times on this guitar to where I was finally like, man, just do it what, originally this was what it was supposed to look like, and I said, no, I want it, should, it needs to be gold, and it needs to be this, and it needs to be, and it's what it's supposed to be, yeah. so I mixed that color, I went to a little body shop, and me and the guy made that color just by playing, I took the fabric that this pit guard's made out of, and I said, hey, let's make this match, and so that color is not a color that you can buy. Wow. If I gotta do another one, I gotta take that paint in there and mix it again, so. One of a um, kind. Yeah, yeah. And we were talking about this a minute ago, I think before the cameras were rolling, but like what you did with the neck on this is what I do mm -hmm. to the necks on guitars that I buy anyway. Yeah, um, I think a lot of this has to do with 
me working with some cool, really nice old vintage guitars, you know what they're supposed to feel like, yeah. and I just try to make new wood feel like that. So it's it's clear coated here and here, and then the, the neck shaft <laughs> is oiled, and uh, it's just true oil. Lots and lots of coats of true oil, going over it with some 600 grit, and going over it with higher grits until it, it feels like it's supposed to, and same thing on the uh, on the fretboard. There's no finish on the fretboard at all. Um, those dots are even wood. They're Wingate dots in there. Um, oh man! I don't. If I'm gonna buy plastic, I might as well just use some of the stuff that I have laying around. And I, uh, the side dots actually, they haven't been charged, but they glow in the dark. They're in a. Uh, I make those. They're a copper tube, and then they have a glow in the dark. So I'm blind now. I want to be able to see on stage. So <laughs> yeah, I try to make guitars that. You know, years of playing in bands, you know what works and what doesn't work. And yeah. I try to make something that, you know, uh, what I'm going after is a guy who is not afraid to spend a little bit of money because he knows you got to get a good instrument, but he, he doesn't want to spend six grand on a guitar. He yeah. wants to he wants to buy a good instrument that feels good, plays good, sounds good, looks good. Um, it feels played, it feels worn in, it doesn't feel or look trashed. Yeah, you know, like I'm not thinking about the relicking on this while right. I'm holding it. Right, it's just it's a very natural, like just just not thinking about it. And part of the deal with the uh, the finish here and the finish here, but not here. Mm -hmm. I never realized what a big difference it was going to make for my hand to be in true oil aside, pretty much direct contact with the wood yeah. of the instrument. It feels like I actually have my hands on the steering wheel of the car for the first time ever. It makes sense. You, you know, you got something. And another thing I do, all my bolt-on necks, there's not wood screws. I don't use wood screws on anything except your bridges and stuff. These are actually machine screws, and there are brass inserts inside. Yeah, I dig that. I can pull. If I kept tightening these screws, I could make that whole plate just disappear into that wood just by tightening it up. <laughs> so, you know, you get some, some neck joints that are... You know, you look at some of the old vintage stuff, especially some of the stuff from the 70s and the neck joints were sloppy. Well, that's a, a repair person's way to be able to make that joint better is to put, so let's put some inserts in it and tighten it and just make it good. So, you know, it takes an extra hour to do, but I think it makes a huge difference and none of my guitars yet have been built without them. Oh, so. no. I, I feel like it increases my confidence in, mm -hmm. in that joint, but also... Have you noticed any difference in how that sounds? I, I think I have, but you know, I mean. Eric Johnson would probably tell us. Eric that. Johnson could tell us, yeah, for sure. I mean, you know, to me, I've always been a set neck guy um, because I thought, well, you know, wood glued to wood, that's the next best thing. Yeah. And I, now I'm starting to realize it might be even be the better thing because if you've had to do any neck resets, you've had to do any it's a lot easier to take this off, and if I can make that joint as tight as a glued-in joint that can be serviceable, if somebody wanted to, they want to all of a sudden take that bridge off, put a tunematic on, throw a, a Bigsby on it. Well, we got to do something with the neck because right now it's at a zero neck angle. So if we needed to put it at a one degree neck angle, it's real easy to do. And that was the beauty of the the Telecaster. I mean, you know, that's the beauty of the Fender guitars. You yeah, know, being able to quickly hot rod and mod. Sure. It. Yeah. And you know, originally, <laughs> Leo Fender never wanted anybody to refret a guitar. That neck worn out. He wanted you to throw that neck away, buy another one, screw it on. I'm glad we didn't, but you know, at the same point, that was the whole point of it. It's a, it's a, it's brilliant. And um, over the years, I've realized the brilliance of the T style guitar. I was always a Les Paul guy, and now I'm just kind of going that way, you know? I mean, it's the uh, same ballpark. Yeah. <laughs> In a lot of ways, it hangs It hangs the same, you know? When you're wearing a guitar strap, it hangs about the same yeah. as Les Paul. Well, that's kind of, you know, what I go for. Um, and that guitar, while we're talking about hanging and the way it's feeling, that guitar's super thin. If you notice, it's got a, a, a three-way toggle instead of a... Uh, instead of a, a regular blade style toggle, and that's because mm. the body wasn't deep enough. Show them the, uh, the the actual cutaway here, if you don't mind, Adam, right here, this part. I'm this, oh yeah, the... Uh, I mean, that goes down to nothing. Like, there's, there's, I think that's an inch right there. 
and then it comes up to the full depth, which is I think 1.60, so just over an inch and a half that, that guitar is. Um, it makes it for a lighter guitar, you know. You can have a light guitar that doesn't feel like trash and uh, you don't have to have a guitar that weighs 80 pounds hanging on you to, to sound good and, and resonate and so. Yeah. That's all from beating myself up for 30 years, you know. I, I'm too old to, to wear heavy guitars now. That's why my, my future Same. is. Same, my, yeah. this thing is ideal. I'm pissed yeah. off that you're raffling it off. Well, you can buy <laughs> tickets. We're selling tickets uh, for uh, $20 a piece or six for a hundred, and you can buy as many of them as you'd like. Yeah, yeah. So, but you know, anybody that doesn't win the raffle, if you happen to see this guitar or if you got other ideas, let's build something, let's do something. I really enjoy working with a customer that comes in and says, hey, I like this, but I like my neck to feel like this or, you know, whatever. So that's my, that's, that's the thing is I'm trying to build guitars for the customer exactly what they wanted, but they can't just walk in and buy off the shelf. This is my T-style body, but I, I just refuse to do actual copies. So this is my Taurus shape. And um, it's kind of a, a T-style with a little slimmer waist and, and a, it's, it's ass kicked out a little bit. It's my uh, 79 Camaro with Kragers on the back, jacked up that I do on basically all my guitars, slightly offset. Um, I truly think it comes from when I was a kid, my neighbor had a silver Z28, 79 Z28 that was Kragers on the back sitting about like this. And uh, he had a triple stack of Marshalls, a really sweet Strat and a really sweet Les Paul, and he left the door open when he played. So I used to just stand <laughs> in, his, in his front door and be like, this guy's awesome. So He's got it all. I think it all worked into, yeah. I mean, that was the dude back then. I have no idea where he is now. Sounds like a T-style guitar. The uh, headstock on this guitar, I also have a locking tuners, hip shot locking tuners, um, and they're staggered, so you don't have to have as, as many string trees and that kind mm. of good stuff. It's got a nice down pull. Um, it's got a, a, a Barden bridge that has um, compensated brass saddles. Uh, it's a little cut out right here. Yeah, nice CTS 250 pots. 047 cap, switchcraft switch, switchcraft input jack. So it's got good good guts. There's no, you know, it's, I even put the, the vintage style pushback wiring in it and that kind of thing. So, um, you know, I know I can buy, I can buy cheaper pots and cheaper parts and cheaper everything else, but it ends up as a cheaper guitar and that's not what I'm going for. So if I can spend another 30 bucks on a bridge that's going to make all the difference in the world, I'm going to do it. And that cuts down on my bottom line. One day it will make up for in the long run. So that's that's kind of what I'm going for. Well, that's, I mean, it paid off. This thing handles like a muscle car, but like a Corvette. Cool. That's awesome. <laughs> I dig that. Obviously, you can see my uh, my car obsession in the, in the paint job that I threw on that. Yeah, it's funny you said Corvette, because that was actually a Corvette blue that we then turned around and added a bunch of other colors to. <laughs> well, that's kind of neat. Yeah, that was a uh, 63 Corvette blue, I believe, that we mixed around and added some more colors to make it match that uh, that pit guard. Wow. Pit guard is um, custom made. It's fabric backed, and uh, it's custom made, and then just, you know, normal beveled and all that kind of stuff. and. I made it to, to match the guitar. Um, I can't stand pick guards that don't follow the lines of the guitar. 
it, it drives me crazy. So yeah. I try to make everything look like it should. This guitar also has a two-way truss rod. So that neck's never going anywhere. You know, if, it, if you want to, if you need to put it into a back bow, you can do it. If you need to put it in a front bow, you can do it. I think I got it fairly straight right Yeah, now. this thing is straight. Yeah. It is straight. Yeah, that came from you again. Uh, I, I used to love to have, a, I thought I needed a bunch of relief and stuff in my necks, and then I realized I'm just hurting myself. Like, I'm fighting for no reason. And, uh, you know, you listen to guys like Billy Gibbons. He's like, man, why the hell are you fighting? Put some eights on that damn thing, you know? And so that's kind of where I'm at now. I set everything <laughs> working up. Working too hard. Yeah, I set everything up. I was, I was playing 11s for years and years, 11s and, and higher. And um, I'm setting up everything now with nines, or excuse me, with tens. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, tens on a, on, a, on a Fender style, 25 and a half inch scale, sometimes can be hard. You know, it can feel real stiff. So... Again, getting the right setup and making it where it feels nice and slinky and smooth is, is important. So, But it's always weird to me because everybody's different. So I'll, I'll bring it in and be like, God, I really hope this thing feels good. And then as soon as somebody's like, yeah, I'm like, okay, cool. I'm, I'm where it needs to be. Because yeah. when you put it in somebody else's hands and they and they like it and enjoy it, then it's it's cool. Yeah. You know. Magic all so. came out on this end. Well, thanks, dude. I appreciate it. And again... Um, you know, this thing's going to be raffled off. Hopefully it'll go, it's going to go to a good home and for a good cause. Um, it also has a, a custom hard shell case, which it's, it's a hard shell case with King Electric guitars on it. But that was uh, actually donated from Mr. Cameraman over here uh, at JimmyEther.com. He, he threw the case in for this raffle that we're doing. So, uh, you know, again, tickets are uh, 20 bucks a piece. You can do six for 100 and information is going to be in the link below. Um, I appreciate Upbeat for allowing me to be part of this. And uh, thank you to, to uh, Jacob for being a friend and his family for, you know, suggesting that we do this with Upbeat. And, and um, guitar was built with love, and I hope whoever gets it loves it. So thanks a lot, guys. Thanks for letting me play it. Yeah, man, of course. Mm -hmm.